welcome. This is Jenny here with Sipping Streams Tea Company, and I wanted to invite you and introduce to you one of my really good friends, Shalini, who is a fourth generation tea, um, tea estate owner. So she is part of this family that has had tea estates in India for four generations. And so we are actually tea immersion and transformation retreat this coming April where we'll be visiting Shalini's family and what they do and these different types and sounds that she's grown up with. So Shalini, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Jenny. Thanks for inviting me. Excited mm -hmm. to be here. Yeah. So this is the first time that we've partnered with this amazing adventure for this year. So it's pretty exciting. And so what should we expect from this tea immersion program? Hello, you cut off for just a second. Yes, this is the first time we're going on to this kind of a program. And mm -hmm. we're looking forward to giving a really unique experience to the people who sign up. So what should we expect? What's a little bit of something of what it's gonna look like? Well, it's um, what we've tried to do is to give um, a little bit of um, culture, history, and also, of course, you get to be immersed in how tea making occurs. So uh, you'll be staying in two of the uh, major tea growing regions of India, which is Assam and Darjeeling. Mm -hmm. These are work uh, teas from this area are well renowned everywhere. And our family actually has a tea farm uh, or garden in both the areas. Yes. So, yeah. pe so people will get to see manufacturing from the bottom up, live in the tea estate, talk to the people, and it'll be very unique um, experience. Yeah, so we're going to be meeting in Calcutta. Can you tell us what's special about Calcutta and how th going there would be, you know, a benefit part of this um, tea immersion program? Yes, so Calcutta, which is now called Kolkata, they changed the names from the British ways. So this is located in West Bengal, which is um, a port. It's near the river Hooghly. Um, Calcutta or Kolkata was the um, capital of the British uh, Empire till 1911. And then the capital moved to Delhi. So you will be able to see uh, the grandeur of the British Raj that's left over there. They're very uh, nice buildings. There's the Victoria Memorial. Um, there's also a building called the Riders Building, which used to be the former headquarters of the East India Company. Wow. So you see, yeah, it's That's pretty, pretty interesting. Cool. And you'd be surprised to learn that there were so many diverse kinds of people there through its history. There are Armenian and Portuguese churches, there's Jewish synagogues, there's a whole Chinese community. So people often don't know too much about Kolkata. It's not really on the major tourist map as uh, many other cities in India are, but it's got a very um, long history. And um, we'll actually be doing a walking tour there. So you walk through some of the older parts and we'll show you what it used to be like and what it wow. is now. That yeah. will be so amazing, just being like essentially steeped in this culture and history. I didn't know what was there either, other than it was a very populated place. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, yeah, that's, that it's would all, be it, fun. Yes, it's also is the oldest tea auction in the world was here, started by the British back in 1861. Mm -hmm. So it is still the center for, at least for North India, tea auctions. So you'll actually get to see the tea auction, which is run by J. Thomas and company, which is a very old British company. And mm -hmm. uh, so the lot of history of tea, as far as its commerce is in Kolkata. Mm -hmm. So what will it be like to then fly over to SM? So Assam is the easternmost state of India. If you look at the map, it's the part that sticks out after Bangladesh. 
and it borders Myanmar. So it's about an hour, 15, 20 minute flight or hour and a half. It's not very far, but it's totally different. Um, it's a very tropical area. Its main um, uh, commerce there is tea. So you'll just yeah. see tea and rice, <laughs> tea and rice and coconut palms growing everywhere. It's a very green, lush, it's a humid climate because that's what's good for you know, this kind of production. Yeah, so we should probably be prepared for that type of climate when we join this tea program. Yes, you'll be coming at the second half of April, which is kind of the beginning of summer in India. It's actually, and it will be uh, humid. But this humidity and heat is what makes the tea grow best. So you're coming at a time which is the second flush, just coming into the second flush season in Assam. And that is uh, one of the prime um, tea growing uh, times. Yeah. So, yeah, that, so that, that's pretty cool yeah, to be able to see the peak season of tea, essentially. Right. And, and the best teas are made in this season. So it's kind of oh. a very a nice time to arrive in, uh, in the tea growing areas. Great. And so how long do you think we're going to be staying there? I think we're there for three nights or four nights. Mm -hmm. And um, you get to stay within the tea estate, which is Kongya tea estate. It's mm -hmm. um, a large, you know, the tea estates in India are all large because they were set, set up by the British in this manner. And that's still the legacy that's continuing, though there are more and more smaller farmers coming in. But Kongya tea estate was um, bought by my family back in 1949 when the British were leaving and has been in the family ever since. So it's um, several generation of workers that live there that we have known of and that know us. Um, it's um, quite a unique uh, place. You will, the, the people who work there live within the tea plantation. Wow. With their, fa with their family. So you get to visit their villages, see how the local people live, and then, of course, how, you know, tea is manufactured, which is very different uh, in its processing compared to the other area, Darjeeling, that we'll be going to. Wow. So essentially, this isn't like some small farm that we could just see the end of. This is a huge estate with like families yes. and villages within there. Right. And we'll be I, able to see their everyday life. You will. It's about 1,500 acres. So it's not wow. a small... Uh, uh, and the factory is also very large. They produce about 2 million kgs of tea a year. So it's, it's quite a large amount of tea that's produced. Cool. And so then after that, we're going to Darjeeling, right? Well, before you go to Darjeeling, though, you're going to go to Jorhat, which has the Tea Research Association. And this is, uh, I think it's, again, the largest tea research association anywhere in the world. Wow. Uh, and so we'll be visiting them and then going to Kaziranga, which is uh, a wildlife preserve known for its uh, one-horned uh, rhinoceros. Oh, I think cool. Yeah. So that we spend one night at the preserve before flying to Darjeeling. Wow, what a special treat. Yeah, that'll be, that's quite interesting to see. You don't see that anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then in, so after there, we'll be going to Darjeeling to your other family estate. Estate, right. Mm -hmm. So you'll be going then to Glenburn and Glenburn has become quite well known because we actually have a boutique uh, hotel as part of the estate, which was just the old British bungalow. And my niece, about 20 years ago, thought that this was such a unique place that we should invite other people to come and visit. So over the years, it's become known and many people do come. It's a very small hotel, though. It's only eight rooms. And mm -hmm. that's where you will be staying. Wow. But it is, it is considered one of the really, it's been written up in a lot of travel magazines and won awards. And it's usually quite an expensive place to come to. But as part of this tour, it's going to be included. Uh, and you get to spend four nights in Darjeeling in, in Glenburn. Wow. So 
So what's included with this um, tea immersion and transformation retreat from the tea side? What's, what's all included? Because, you know, some people have some concerns like, oh, do I have to pay for my own travel expenses within there? How do mm -hmm. I know, you know, what do I need to be prepared for? Um, well, it's an all-inclusive price. Um, it includes all the travel within India. You do have to pay for your international flight into Kolkata. But within India, the flights to Assam and Darjeeling and back to Kolkata are included, including all your stays. And uh, even in Calcutta, you'll be put up in a nice hotel. Nice. The food... The food will be included in, you know, most of the time. Sometimes when you're traveling, you may have to buy a sandwich or something or a cup of coffee. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but it's like basically we're covering, you know, when, when you're at the places. It's the transport, the food, all the education about tea. You'll meet the actual tea makers and manufacturers. You'll get to meet some of the family who've, you know, been immersed in this all their lives. And uh, you can ask any amount of questions from them. Plus, uh, Darjeeling has a lot of, um, it has a large forest within the tea estate. So there's a lot of like mm. birds, you can go and do walks and you know, if you're into bird watching. Mm -hmm. and yep. <laughs> there's, there's a couple of rivers that flow through it. And the Kanchanjunga mountain range, um, which is one of the highest, uh, Kanchanjunga is the third highest mountain after, you know, from Everest downwards you can actually see the whole range from the tea estate. Wow. That's amazing. That's just going to be such a, almost such a treat, but almost like it's surreal. Like it's not real when we're there. <laughs> it is. It is kind of an unreal experience because very few places have this kind of, uh, you know, uh, location. Yeah. It's so diverse from like jungles to forests to, you know, the Himalayan mountains, essentially. Yeah. Yes. And if, if you're a walker, you can hike and walk around. And if you don't want to, you can go by Jeep. So it caters oh, nice. to, yes, yes, it caters to both. I always like hiking, so I'm always out there on foot. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, the roads were, are um, there for the Jeeps to travel around the tea garden as well. So I know one person who is joining us. So one of the mm -hmm. seats is already taken. She might be interested in walking, but... Um, because of some personal issues, she might really benefit from like riding in a Jeep for other portions. So yes. that's very nice to be so accommodating for a whole spectrum of people. Yeah, what they often do is because people like to walk down to the river, their Jeep will follow them. So if wow. they get tired halfway, they can jump <laughs> on the Jeep. <laughs> and take a nap on the Jeep or right. something. <laughs> yeah. Bonnie so. just wrote, sounds like a trip of a lifetime. Oh, I'm I'm so excited to go. This is my first time going. Um, years ago, we had Shalini come up to Fairbanks, Alaska um, around the time of the dog sled race that we use her tea for. Um, we sponsored the tea, the official tea of the Yukon Quest dog sled race, which is starting next weekend um, out of Canada this year. And so Shalini had asked me, like, what's dog mushing? Can I come to Alaska and see this? And so I said, OK, a year where it starts from Fairbanks. And it's kind of like a cultural exchange. Like Shalini has visited me in Alaska, taught tea courses there in Alaska. It was really nice to have you. And then I was like, oh, I need to go and visit where you're from. <laughs> well, yes, and Alaska was amazing. I always tell Jenny that that was one of my best trips ever. It was so exciting to see uh, Fairbanks in the winter and to see the dog sled race and be part of it. It was wonderful. So, yeah, I hope this will, this will be as different from Alaska in February as you can get. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what is very interesting about this package is not just the tea program. There are no other tea tour programs out there that have a transformation retreat portion. So Shalini, you were saying you were very interested in joining in those sessions that I'll be leading about yes, the, the personal well-being and healing and growth part and even possibly if like for Shalani in the business sense like you know being able to bounce off 
um, ideas off of me, what I'm doing and, and what you could possibly do to, you know, reach out to more people. We could always, you know, use somebody who has the same interests as us. And it definitely is an intimate group of people. So what's unique about this is that you're going to be able to spend 12 days with the same